Hey folks, man, this is Monk, and we are back with another episode of Classic Cinematics. And I'm joined as always, my co-host, we got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo! Yeah, folks, man, and today we got a very special film, man. This is a film that has been recognized by the Museum of Modern Art, man. So it holds this <laughs> very prestigious a title, man. And we're going to be talking about Basket Case oh, from 1982. Man. And in this film, a grotesquely deformed Siamese twins joins forces with his brother to stalk the physicians who separated them against their will, man. And this is a crazy... So the story goes is this. We got this uh, brother. And he's got like the, the real crazy... Could join twin like like Siamese twins as they used to call them, and he, and it's crazy man. So 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 he's lived with this kid, and, and I guess it seems like when they're in high school, when the separation surgery happens, yeah. I guess their parents took them to these. But they're specialists. tucked off into like an attic, like they don't get to live like you know other children. They're they're definitely uh, the family's dark secret living yeah. up in the attic. By yeah, themselves. so they've been away from the public and just yeah. living. All they just, got just is themselves. All they got is each other. And so they're forced to take it to the surgery and separate it. And this is the crazy part about it, man, because this this whole story is ridiculous, man. Yes, this is, is goofy, crazy, silly. But I kind of understand because the wild part is they separate them. The, the one brother, they stitch him up real nice. The other brother, they just throw this they thing throw in the garbage. Yes. They throw him in the garbage. And the crazy thing is, is they, they talk with telepathy. So, like, the, the one that looks more like a human, he gets up in the middle of the night and he's like, where are you at? I'm coming to get you. He goes mm -hmm. out around the back of the house and yeah. the thing just pokes his arm out of the trash bag. It's like, damn, you had no love. Literally for left him in, like, didn't even check away. if he was alive or maybe just they threw him in care. there. Like, it, it was, it's kind of messed up. Savagery. So, Savagery. so years later, we catch up with our more able brother and he has gone to New York City and his mission is to stalk and track down these scientists and they're killing them one by one the, the ones that were all this group to do the surgery stalking them and getting their revenge so to speak man and that's pretty much the premise of this film man <laughs> you know what i like about it you know what i'm saying i mean this is this is low budget grindhouse horror and yeah. like it's best mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying um and you can see that in various forms um you know what i'm saying not just with the with the grittiness of the film <laughs> stock and the and yeah. the, the acting and everything but in this concept in this story you know what i'm saying and with this this setting i mean i mean we start off with this dude he just He's walking down 42nd Street, Manhattan with a, the biggest wicker basket you probably ever see. I mean, imagine if you're going on a picnic. I mean, this. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah this I like is, the basket, though. This is, this is, you know, you're going to eat good with this basket. Yeah. But he's just kind of carrying the basket down 42nd Street, goes into a hotel. But, you know. You know what's interesting about the basket that I do? Like, it's, 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 it's woven together in a way where if you were inside, you could definitely see out. But yeah. on the outside, you can't really see in unless you get like right, right, yeah. right up on it. It's like so, a, so it's perfect. It's, it's just, like a you know, tinted bass. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so in a way, it gives the other brother some. He's just not. He's just not trapped in dark. All he could kind of see it. what's going on around him. You know. So that's, that's kind of cool. And you know, and and, <laughs> and you know, uh, the the writer director, um, his name is uh, Frank Hennenlotter. He came up with this concept. You know, what I'm saying pretty much. Uh, he said he was at a Nathan's hot dog stand, and he just. <laughs> he, he, he wanted to make a movie. He loved, loves his Grindhouse, uh, Grindhouse movies. We'll get into that in a little later in the show. Um, but he wanted to make a movie about a man with a monster in a basket. And there we go. There's you just know. a way to do it because I never saw this movie, but I heard the name of it and all this over the years. Just, you know, looking into horror things about horror videos. And yeah. people always reference it. I think a basket case was a dude that... You know, that's what they say, like, Crazy. a war. Well, so part of it, too, was wartime. Like, a basket case would be someone who had all their limbs blown off. Yeah. You know, that could happen. Like, you stepped on a mine or something. So, basically, you, you're, just, you're uh, relegated to living in a basket yeah. or, or <laughs> being carted around in a wheelchair or yeah. something like that. You know, and, and another thing I feel like really works for this, this story, you know what I'm saying, is that out the gate like we know if you if you were to rent this or just look at the you know the cover art for the film or knew anyone who has seen it you know there's a monster it, it, that's in this basket but and they insinuate this but the cool thing is is when you get into like the first couple minutes of the film when you see this man in the basket yeah. you don't really know if 
there's really something in the basket or if he's just plumb crazy because mm-hmm. he's just he's opening the basket and like he's kind of got his hands on it. He's dumping <laughs> food in there, but then he's like these noises are coming. God, grumble, 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 get, get. Mm-hmm. you know. But he's like kind of shaking. You're like, is this dude really just all the way off his rocker, or is there really a monster in this basket? And it's cool because then there's a slow progression to, you know, as as the film is building, you know, you're getting these these tense moments where like. Okay, as a viewer, I want to see. We know there's something in the basket, and then there's still a little bit more time whoa, whoa. before we actually see what what is what is yeah. the monster in the basket. His name's Belial, which I thought yeah. that was a cool yeah. It's a weird name, brother Belial. Bro, yeah. But it's cool because you know I looked into the origin of the name, and and, and in some religious um, beliefs, Belial oh, wow. is actually Belial is. The lieutenant for Satan. <laughs> oh so my God! So he like, put like some real world lore. Real world lore. Into it, like, and, and then that. when you actually see Bilal, my man looks like yeah. a big booger with arms and a face. You know okay? what he reminds me of? <laughs> uh, Crane from Ninja Turtles, yes. but like a different color. Yeah, and then Crane, Crane, instead of having tentacles, he's got real arms, but it's like but his fingers are all yeah, jacked up. <laughs> like, like it's just like a lump of flesh with a face on it and two arms sticking out with with messed up fingers. Like it, it, and one of his shoulders, is kind of, and he just yells. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where the where the where the humor comes in because watching this thing do what it does and like like it's it's funny because um like that scene happens in a the movie theater and we get like a little glimpse but not really you know but then later on they actually track down one of the doctors and I think it's so crazy when they um. When he sends him out the basket, yes. it's like, yeah, man, go get him. Go get like, him. Make sure you grab the um the, the, the ledger or the address. Some shit. For the other doctor. Yeah, yeah, for the other doctor. <laughs> and so, so, so we see him go up in there and take out the other doctor. I think that's when we kind of get the glimpse of the full form. I think yes, that, yeah. that is. And, and you, you're just like, yo, what is what am I watching? The, the funniest <laughs> thing about watching? when Bilal starts attacking people, okay, he's a mound of flesh. Mm-hmm. He has yeah. no legs. But he will jump yeah. out of that basket with, 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 with no the, legs. Just pull the, <laughs> Once he grabs you, it's over. You're no, not getting him off. He, he, he's he's clawing at your face, biting, you, biting you. Whatever good fingers he's got, he'll stick in your eyes. Dude, that one mouth. dude. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ola, we'll get to that. We, I think we're going ahead to we'll get to the to the uh, effects and all that. But, but yeah, it's, it's wild, man. So, so let's get to some of these characters, okay, man. Okay, so, you know, <laughs> the, the, it's a very small cast, you know what I'm saying? And that works for this film. But funny thing is, this cast was so small. It might have been all of about like eight to ten people. Mm-hmm. So small that they, at the end credits, they had to use um, a large portion of fake names just mm-hmm. to make it seem make it like, seem like, like there was a bigger movie. You know there were some people. I think we got we got um, well we got brother Dwayne uh, played Dwayne, by that's a, Dwayne is um, what's Kevin his? Van Kevin Van Hotten and and and, 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 and and you know and the thing with him like he does a good job given the source material but what I like about him well and you know also <laughs> he actually he reprises his role in Basket Case 2 and 3 so mm-hmm. for those that think that this movie or thought that it would have flopped no it spawned two sequels I think I'm good yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna get to those but, but now but, I might now that I why not? Why not? If you go in the basket once, you come jump back in. You know? But but the, the cool the cool thing about him is that he like he gives this like this innocent and like unassuming um like presence to his character. Like and you don't really think that he's really up to no good because of the way he portrays himself, but we know that he is because it's kind of like we get that fly. Yeah, he on the seems wall like scenario. a genuinely good guy. Yeah, he just has a really dark mission and, and the crazy thing about it he's not even going about it in a way that's extreme he's just going to like like they they they, they, they they've decided to get rid of these doctors so yes all right that's the that's the worst part of it but even with that they're not malicious about it. the worst part is maybe how Bilal handles them but it's yeah. not like he's but, not treating them bad or being no. a dick and, like and the cool thing is is that you would <laughs> think like you know what i'm saying looking at this from the outside in that Dwayne would be the one manipulating Bilal, but it's really the yeah, other way around. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Bilal is using Dwayne as the puppet because he's the one that looks normal mm-hmm. and can maneuver through you know, society, through society and all that. Yeah. unassuming. So that that's really cool. Um, and then also... Um, the 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 actor uh, Van Hendrick he also was the one who provided the face sculpt for Belial oh, and 
was the one who gave him his voice. He was the one making all those funky ass noises. So, so, That's where it gets me, man. Shout for duality. The, the, the voices. Uh, I did like uh, Beverly Bonner's Casey. Uh, yeah. She's interesting. She lives in this hotel that Dwayne um, holds up in while mm. he's in New York to take out these doctors. And I do. Um, you know, like this New York man, but but she's definitely seems like someone that would have lived in this area. Like the accent is all there, man. She definitely feels like a New Yorker. She's also she's not like like some of the other characters in this film were a bit malicious. Like I think some of the other um, hotel dwellers, they they are more like, she like tried to more, rob them. Yeah, and she's no. she's looking out for him. She's like, look, bro, I know you from you new here, but you gotta be more careful than this. Don't leave stuff out. I seen somebody looking through the, the mm-hmm. keyhole. You know, and you're absolutely right. She brings a certain level of charm to this movie, mm-hmm. and and the cool thing about she's probably the first one that's friendly to him. Yeah, actually, no, 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 as a, yeah, 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 because it's only her and one other person. Mm-hmm. Um, the cool thing about her uh, her character. And just her as an actress as a whole was that the director was so impressed by her work. She only was supposed to get a very small, insignificant role. Mm-hmm. And he was so impressed with her that he extended her role to make her a secondary ah, character. That's pretty cool. And she is the only one. I think she's in all the sequels because I looked in, at her um, she's IMDb. In every yeah. movie that, that this dude has done, that, um, what's his name? Henan Lotter has done. And mm-hmm. he's done a lot of strange films. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, what was the one that stood out to me was uh, what, Frankenhooker. Uh, I was like, what? I remember uh, hearing about that. That is yeah. one that's big in this era too. Uh, brain damage as well. Oh yeah, brain damage um, is the other one. Yes. Like, so the fortunately, unfortunately, I'm just looking. I didn't know that she passed away in 2020. Oh, rest in uh, peace. Rest in peace. Mm-hmm. You know, and then um, the the only other person that really kind of has a meaty role in this would be Terry Susan Smith, mm-hmm. who plays Susan. Who is Dwayne's love interest? Yeah. The secretary at the at the um mm-hmm. the doctor's office, and she kind of is like if crazy. if there is <laughs> if, if there if there is um an emotional compass that you can give to this film, it would revolve around her character. She is the one that is is trying to you know treat Dwayne as if he's mm-hmm. a person, and. Um, treat him in a way that norm, you know, normal people treat normal people, which he is not used to. She really cares about him genuinely. He's not used to that. As a matter of fact, I think he even makes a comment that he's never really, not just never been with a woman, yeah, never kissed a woman, know, never date, all of that shit in yeah, a woman. Yeah, you know like yeah, he's, fresh, he's, ever he's fresh out the surgery, and you know what though, we do lose some bit of time because I don't know what happens. It's like I said, he feels like he's maybe. 16 when his surgery goes down and so there's a few years when he comes lose. up to the hotel he's yeah, 20 yeah, so yeah. we got, so, four, so we four got four a probably years. a few years but as they're the loss so one one cool thing about terry susan smith is this is the only role she's ever been in this what? is her only time as an actress because she actually was a member in this punk rock band called the tattooed vegetables oh what happened with them I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I tried to look up some of their music yeah, so we could, yeah, well, it was like a dive into it. Is, yeah, but that era was, it was crazy. I want to say it was, um, it was like, uh, it was, uh, I think the, the band was from like 78 to like 80 something. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, they also, um, in all the, the information I was able to dig up, they said that, you know, shout out to the wig work because she was actually bald head, like shaved bald. Oh, and so I was, a, I was thinking, I was like, her hair does look really good. Yeah. <laughs> but, but also, I could tell, too, there, there's parts where uh, Casey's, uh, she was also wearing wigs, so you could just tell just by, you know. Yeah. But, but um, yeah, so th- that, that was wild. The only other character I think got good screen time was... Um, uh, Judith Cutter, uh, doctor uh, played by the doctor. She was one of the doctors played by Dan Brown. And how's the doctor um, that did the surgery? How are her last name Cutter? Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, ah. they, they, they were they were high on the jokes with this. Yes. Man. Yeah. So the the crazy thing, man. One thing I do like about this is the setting, man. Um, you know, um, because this thing is taking place like his hotel room is in like it looks like Forty Second Street, uh, New York. It is. Like it it's, it's kind of cool Street. to see those streets. Like I could imagine. What year was this? Um, 80, 82. Um, 80. This probably was filmed the same year. Um, what's the name was running around doing um, Taxi Driver? What's Taxi Driver? 80, though? I think. I think Might be 80. I think uh, I thought it was like 78, 79. Let me see. Uh, actually, yeah, you're right, 76. Never mind. But it's the same streets, man. It looks, but, and you know, <laughs> it looks like the same streets because, like, there's a part where he first arrives to go to get to the hotel mm-hmm. and he's walking past the peep shows and, and all that stuff still there. Oh. But then you look at some of the other scenes later with the mm-hmm. the, the people in the hotel and, and the people on the streets, the extras, the, the girls, 
They're like they look like pr- real Shout prostitutes. Shout out to the drug dealer, they real, dog. Yeah, yeah, that was like, that looked like a real you, dude. Did bro. you hear that list? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he did not have all that. I think he was. I think he was looking to rob uh, my yes, man. Yes, he was. He was trying to say whatever <laughs> yeah. one of them words was going to make my man like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. He's yeah, like, man, exactly. I got, he's like, he, yeah, he, he, had, he was he like, didn't respond to the nothing. drugs. What's, What's wrong with you? He's like, I, I got girls too. Because <laughs> he's like, whatever he was going to say, even if he would have said, I got soda, and my man would have, yeah. I think he was trying to but, rob my man or set him up or sell him some But you know, you're, you're, you're absolutely <laughs> right. Like, that, that opening shot, it is, it's, it is a testament to writer-director Frank Hemmenlotter, like, um, he when he came up, he he was a big fan of the the rundown grindhouse theaters yeah. that played these midnight exploitive horror movies. Mm-hmm. You know, like they were like called midnight features, and um, so that's why he wanted to you know really expose this setting. And actually, when he made this film, his goal was to just get this movie played in one of those theaters. Mm. Even if it was only once, he would have been happy. I mean, it's... Man, start- that's a goal, and yeah, you, you, it, you, you it, accomplished it. It started <laughs> off with a $16,000 budget. All his money that he mm. gave, his life savings. Damn, so he put up a lot of it. He put up oh, he put up almost all of it, at least a large portion. Because I think I saw the budget was like 35000 The budget was 35000 so what so he did... someone else probably what, matched him. What he did is actually, once, once they ran out of, of everything that they could... Could exhaust from the sixteen thousand. They started sending out reels of what they had done so far mm. to get investors to kind of contribute uh, a little more. Okay. And then you know it, it was wild because once the the movie finished, it premiered at the Cannes Film Festival. What? Yes. What? It premiered at the Cannes <laughs> Film Festival. <laughs> Cannes. Oh my no, god! No, I mean, this is where this did shit, it get a standing this, ovation? No, no. <laughs> I don't know. Did but it get is, the, the Palm Dior? This, this is where. Said, this is where this is where it gets kind of funky, right? So because it, you know, because of its, um, because of the the response it got at the Cannes Film Festival, it Whoa. did get distribution. But the thing is, is that the distribution company wanted to then, you know, give this movie to the world as a straight up comedy. So remove mm. all of the gore, what? the blood, and Yo, just make it a take comedy. That out. Right. So the- <laughs> they did that. Then they started releasing it back in these midnight theaters, and it got like, like. It got bombed. It, like yeah. nobody wanted to, 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 to see deal that. With it. That's because, goofy. I mean, what nah. makes this movie unique is the horror and comedy yeah. blend, right? Because I mean, I ain't gonna lie. It's kind of dry up until we get into right to that first mission where they where he sends Bilal yeah. after the. See, like, like, this is how if you this, leave that out, I don't know what kind of movie you got. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is the shit that gonna blow your mind, dog. You know who who put the clear and saved this movie? Spielberg. Joe Bob Briggs. Oh, Joe Bob Briggs. He was doing film stuff back then. He was That's doing yes. He, this was before he was doing driving. He was just he was doing. Where is um, he from? Texas, oh. Dallas. And he so pretty much what it was is he was writing these articles. Ooh, and when, though, when, like, the, yeah. when the distributor wanted to premiere this in Dallas, Texas, they mm-hmm. wanted Joe Bob Briggs to host it. And he was like, the only way I'm going to host this film is if you show the uncut version that I saw when I was at the Cam's Film Festival. Oh, he was there. So he was in class? There. So he was there. Yeah. So, so wow. here's the thing. So what he did is then he, you know, he pushed so hard for it. They said, all right, cool. Mm-hmm. They released the uncut version. It got rave reviews. And then in all of these midnight theaters... They re-released it as the new bro. raw and uncut, uncut version. version. Yeah, and I mean that's people, a good selling point. Back people then, started you, flooding yeah. in, and there was one particular theater in New York that premiered this movie at midnight for two and a half years straight Damn. and still gained profit. Mm. So that's how this this film regained its its yeah. own and became a cult <laughs> classic. As that's a whole. crazy, dude. I, I didn't know Joe Bob went back. That that's far. what I'm saying. And when you think about it, like watching this film this is something that you would think that you would see on USA's Up All Night with Gilbert mm, Godfrey I can see that. or Joe Bob heavily Ray edited Simon. <laughs> heavily edited of course or like if you're if you're one of those rare kids like myself that you know be up at 3 in the morning watching <laughs> oh, Cinemax yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can see that <laughs> but the funny thing about this man like like you talk about the impact of this film man I don't the, the comedy and stuff is there, but I don't think a lot of people wrote off of that. Even though, you know, a lot of these films at this time, low budget, I think, you know, you look at this film, you can see how this would inspire someone. Yeah. I would say the thing that stands out to me really is the gore stuff. Like, like, like you know, especially people that are into the gore hounds and stuff with that. Because, yeah. like, I think that's probably the most solid effects. Like, the kills and the deaths, they still look kind of... 
you know, they got they got some impact, man. They look well done. Even the though blood looks <laughs> yeah, the blood looks crazy, like like the blood looks, looks like real. Because I think in this era, you were getting a lot of that blood that was just too red, bright and red, just like bright red. Like almost fluorescent. They were saying it showed up better on the screen, but but this yeah, had that right. little more purplish kind of shit. But then also. What trips me out about it is the low budget shows through the cracks. You just got to suspend a lot of disability. Because yeah. when you look at Brother Bilal, yeah. he's, 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 he, you can see you can see the Brother seams Bilal. from the mold of putting this puppet together. Like, yes. like even in the, the hands, because like, there's, there's shots where you don't it's see just him. just the hands. Just the hands. And those look better than the wide shots where it's him. And then they use stop motion. Little trivia. <laughs> little trivia real quick. So the hands, when they did those, those were just, it started off with uh, Hem and Lauder's hands. Mm -hmm. But then those molds shrunk. So it was his eight-year-old daughter who oh, had to finish what? those scenes. Yeah. Because the scenes I could understand yeah. the materials and the technology at that time being so new. Yeah. But, 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 you know, <laughs> and no, the thing is, is you're, you're right, dude. The, the effects solely rely off effort, you know, mm -hmm. effort and imagination. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it works. It works for this movie because what it, you know, like with this heavy use of the puppets and, and, and the gloves and these, these, these obscure camera angles, it really, it, it adds to this, like, this grittiness look and feel that we're getting from what <laughs> we would expect from one of these style of films. And nothing puts it on display more than, I mean, we've been waiting to talk about it. Nothing puts it on display more <laughs> than the stop motion scene when Bilal trashes yes, the hotel dude, room. Dude, that's, that's when it woke me My up. My God. Because I ain't going to lie. <laughs> I was watching this and I was kind of sleepy. Uh, looking at it, I'm like, all right, man, I guess. And then when this scene happens, because it's, 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 it happens at a pivotal moment. Because uh, Dwayne is out with the, with the girl from the office. From the one doctor's office that yes. he went to see. And they're having a great time. It's and his it's, first thing ever. First, it's his first kiss. But some, for some reason, Brother Bilal, the telepathic connection, he knows the moment he, his brother kisses this woman. And then the, the, the shot switches to Bilal. And he's like, ah. <laughs> like and, it's, and it's just the wildest <laughs> look because he already looks crazy. And then he yeah, just I'm on the basket up. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny it's because they really set the tone because what it is is Dwayne Dwayne was supposed to go look and do some investigative research on one of the yeah. doctors he lied to Bilal about it but bought him yeah. a TV that's the funny part too because he gives Bilal the TV but then, so the Bilal tries the fact to that change he's going the on his channel day. and rips the damn knob right out right out the gate so TV's TV. worthless yo he leaves the room he, he pulls up the antennas <laughs> and rolls out the TV scramble he didn't even take the time he to put my man on a good a, channel, a channel. And Bilal just rips the brace of TV bar. And next thing you know, when he feels that Dwayne is getting a kiss, yeah. dog, oh he, he hops on the floor and he's crawling around. He's breaking shit. He tosses Yo, the, the dresser drawer, drawer out and throws backwards. That drink. Yo. And then, you know, like, I love this part because this is just, you know, this, like you said, you got to suspend your belief. They, you can tell they just hooked the puppet to the end of the bed and he's like, oh, 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 oh. I, you know what I love about this scene too? Because all the other hotel people, they're coming out. They're like, what's going on? There's oh, a madman in there. And, then, <laughs> and the whole time he's just yelling. Oh, oh, God. God. He's like, yeah, he, oh my God. He sounds so crazy, man. And, and just the look of him too. Because he kind of, he has like a uh, mouth like sloth from Goonies. Yes. So it's just, and then these weird sounds are coming out. Oh my god! I, I felt bad laughing, but but I was I got a good laugh out of that. But it's funny. Man. This is like this is the first time I've seen this movie, man. So so that was that was oh. crazy to me. Oh and after god. that, I was in. Yeah, I was like, whatever they gonna throw at me, they they, they won me. They they won yeah. me over. They gave me a really good hearty belly laugh. And, and I'm in there. I'm like, whatever. I'm in that Wherever this goes. Take, take me oh, on an adventure, Bilal. And but, but I just, I loved, I, but I loved that that was what ticked it off. Because yes. cause the brothers, like, he's really a good brother to this crazy he creature. He's, he's there. He's dedicated. But then I love the scene when he gets drunk. With, with the girl with and he starts talking shit about yeah. him and he's right behind him she, he can hear this that, that you're talking and like you know, and, it's, it, 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 and you know what I don't like what he's saying to me it can be offensive I can see but but I don't think like like based on how he treats his brother I don't think deep down that's just how he feels I think it just came out like that because he's drunk well, and the thing you know, is too some of, is, there's some truth in there but, yeah. but I think there's also some love in there too the you thing know? is too is that they said that since he was so drunk I mean he, this dude is 
Dwayne is inexperienced in everything. Mm-hmm. He's inexperienced mm-hmm. with girls, with drinking, with life. Okay, but they said since he got so hammered, there are parts where he starts re- referring to himself in the third person. Mm-hmm. Well, Dwayne, he he was able to do this better. They said that at first, you know, when people watch this, they thought that it was um, a mistake in editing, uh, but it's not. They're saying that since he was so inebriated, that Bilal was actually able to yeah, get into get his into mind. Him. And, and Bilal was hour, talking to, and he to was the woman. Talking to the woman mm-hmm. as himself. Because then you see, like, you know, right after this, you know, <laughs> Bilal is a little pervert, okay? Yeah, he is, He's a little he pervert. And, but he know, ain't had enough no experiences either, though. That's kind of crazy. Well, They're not just, excusing it. That doesn't but mean you say get to... <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I'm, but, but I'm just saying, all that stuff has also got to be new to him, too, because yeah. he's... He's limited in what he can, how he can interact with the world. Like I even thought yeah. about, I was like, yo, how does he take a dump? And there's a scene where he's sitting on the toilet, but also, but like, he was hiding in the toilet. But, oh, he was hiding. <laughs> he was, oh, that was but, after he killed the dude that broke into oh, him to try to steal but, the money. But, but all the scene where he's dumping all his burgers, I'm like, yo, this guy's just like, he's just a mass of flesh. Like how how much space he got in that gut? Like like what's going or how come he's not <laughs> bigger? Like how come he yeah. doesn't turn into like a bigger? Yeah, he's putting away a lot of food to be that small, or is it, bro. Kind, is it kind of or is like, he just running straight through? Like, I don't know. Where I don't, is he I didn't going? Get it. His yeah. basket looks Because that bad. <laughs> I'm saying that basket would get stank real quick. Yes, it would. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably yeah, getting man. on him in the theater, man. Who that dude up front with the stinky basket? <laughs> stinky basket. <laughs> making all them dumb fucking noises. <laughs> Yo, this movie's crazy, man. Dude, it is just... Like, this is one of those ones where, you know, you, you, you don't even have to have an expectation so, bar. Don't. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's man. fun. It's fun because of the concept. I ain't gonna lie, though. Because... I, I like the ending too, man. Cause like, oh. like it's the end is one of the ones where they they you know who stole this ending? The good son. The good son. Because <laughs> because because he's hanging. Oh man, brother, they they fighting at this point. Well, because my brother Bilal <laughs> don't know how to be with the ladies. Yeah, brother Dog. Bilal's <laughs> trying to rape this woman, and this is after <laughs> after the drunken escapade. He sneaks in Cassie's room, tries this to crazy. He's hide behind her pillow, and then tries to you know feel her up. And this movie's steals crazy. Steals her underwear, bro. then rapes the brother's girlfriend. Yeah, so they <laughs> fighting, and then all of a sudden they go out the window, and they're hanging on. Is brother Bilal holding on to the side, holding brother his brother, Bilal. holding his brother down? <laughs> and it's one of the moments in the movies where you're just like, what the fuck's gonna happen? And yo, it's crazy because cause, cause, cause Bilal probably would, would have survived this fall, but the other brother, he's maybe too not. Heavy. Yeah, and Bilal's swole, bro. You see how strong yeah. he was? Yeah, he lifted he my was, man up by the hole. He was holding, <laughs> yes. <laughs> he got mad because after after Bilal, you know, was not cool with, with Dwayne's girlfriend, Dwayne was pissed and he was yeah. like, man, I'm gonna take you out. If I ever get if I ever get my hands on you again, I'm gonna kill you, Bilal. Yeah, and then man. Bilal was like, oh yeah, he jumps out the basket. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, put the elevator to the top floor yeah, yeah. with his nuts. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so so then they're hanging, and, and it is funny because you could tell Bilal's trying to save his brother, and, and he just can't. But he's, hold he's holding him by the throat. Yeah. Like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> and then boom, they just fall, and that's it. It's almost like King Kong, where you just see them all the crowd gathering around and shit, which was wild, which, 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 which was also kind of cool because you get an aerial shot, and it's just more. Uh, 42nd Street street people, which yeah. I thought looked cool, because like, yeah. they're all like, yeah, the one group clearly looked like they were some uh, ladies of the night. They were. If you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> like, real. You know, it wasn't uh, no... <laughs> another thing that's really cool, too, I say, in 2006, um, we, what is it, Weird Weird Videos released the 20th anniversary edition mm-hmm. of this, no, it would have been tw- uh, 2002, the 20th anniversary edition of this film. Um, I got that, and there is a lot of behind-the-scenes footage. There's this one this one part where uh, Henning Lauder is actually cruising through um, where they where they filmed this with mm-hmm. uh, Ra, uh, R.A. the Rugged Man. And, oh, wow. Oh, man, they're going, they're, they're going to, the, to the club scene, and the coolest thing about the um, that... The, the 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 ending scene where they're suspended from the sign like they take us to that building and dude i kid you not like the sign was actually maybe this high off the ground mm-hmm. and they just they, they put it <laughs> up the camera and it was just camera yeah. angle and they yeah. had they had Dwayne just kind of on like this little platform i could tell because they're, they're it, the camera does some weird stuff too at that moment like what is it's like a weird shake going on like like it's wobbly like, yeah. like when, when that shot it's, yeah, it's just, I mean, like I said, this this is, you know, this is like balling on a budget at its best. I mean, they they really, you know, this is one of those things that dreams are made of. You know, mm-hmm. this, this guy, Hannah Lauder, he had an idea, a thought, 
and and put it in motion. You know what I'm saying? And how many people can say that they actually <laughs> did that? Yeah, you know I mean? like that. That's all I mean. You gotta celebrate any kind of win, no matter how it comes out. They got something done. Yeah, you know. And that's and why I tell people: you wait till it's perfect. You probably not gonna get it done. And that's you know, the thing. You know, too, you're probably not even gonna start it. You yeah. Know? So, he he actually said, "quote out of his mouth." He said, "If I would have known that I would to, were to be making a cult classic film, mm-hmm. then I probably would have found a way to mess it up." Yeah. He did not expect this film to ever be what it become or what it became what it is now he just thought that if he could get it played one time in one of those grindhouse <laughs> yeah. theaters that's a win for him yeah. you know say just that's for his just love for the, get... for the theaters you know, mm-hmm. and, and that that era of movie <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. but, look at it man we're talking about this thing like years later I think we could wrap this up man uh yeah, man. Check out Basket Case if you haven't seen it. For me, this is my first time, man, so that's wild, bro. Um, <laughs> I'll definitely recommend it, you know, if you are an adventurous person. Just for the history of having this in your personal film viewing register, man. If you're a uh, film, uh, film fan, especially horror films, man, mm-hmm. this should definitely be one that you have seen. But, um, yeah, check it out, man. And also check us out, man, at Classes of Cinematics on Instagram. And you can find me at Monkey Blood on Twitter and Instagram. And this is Bobby Blockbuster. You can always catch me on this show and our new segment, The Best Of. <laughs> yeah. All right, folks. <laughs> <laughs>